Yeah, I had the site muted from the tab just so that can come through. All right, I turned the mics on. I think we're ready to go. Um, you want to give me a quick check of your mic? Okay, check? Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good, as far as I can tell. All right. All right, I think, uh, I think we're good here. Um, I see myself. I see you. I'm monitoring the YouTube channel to see if it pops up. I think there's a little delay. Yeah, looks like we're good. We're up and running. All right. Um, hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome back to Making Comics on my channel. Uh, I know it's been a minute since we've done one, but um, I found this was a good opportunity to do one today. I've got uh, Corey Lansdale with me. Um, this is kind of a kind of a unique opportunity because I'm actually working with Corey on, on this project. So um, I'll just do the obligatory. If you're here watching now, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already, that really helps me out hit the like button and um, hopefully we'll do some more of these. I know there's plenty of independent creators and I want to have this channel to dedicate to independent creators and their comics and their projects. Or if you don't know, I've got one coming up too later, hopefully in 2022. But for right now, we're here talking with Corey about Okui. I, you know what? You know what, Corey? I'm just going to let you introduce it. You can say all the big words that I don't know how to say. And uh, you could tell us a little bit about the project and yourself, and uh, we'll go from there. So take it away. So I'm I'm Corey. I also go by Woodrow on Twitter. It's my middle name. Um, so my grandpa's call me. Uh, the book is Okuri Inu, uh, the Oni Within. I get the little tagline on there. So you can't say Okuri Inu. You can just say the Oni Within because it'll be the Oni Within Volume One, Volume Two until that story is told. Um, it is about a haunted warrior that flees his family's criminal syndicate only to have the ripples of his absence turn into waves that force him to face uh, the only within. He is a um, troubled character, solar, sort of like um, a mashup of the Hulk and Blade. He is uh, not half demon, like Blade is half vampire, but he's sort of possessed by a demon. He had that stripped from him at birth and is trained to hunt demons by his father. So he starts out as this sort of living this dark life and comes around to the end of this arc is hopefully becoming a hero. Um, the, uh, um, sorry, <laughs> I just had a brain fart. I get really nervous in front of uh, cameras. Don't worry, um, I'm the same way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I plan on it being a 60 page uh, perfect down book. Um, the way I have it structured is I want to do a 30 page prologue that I'm going to kind of release for free so people can get a little taste of the character. It'll be kind of an origin story that leads into the sort of man on fire type story that the main book is. So, yeah, it's going to be fast paced, lots of action inspired by, like I said, for sort of the Blade and the Hulk and uh, mixed in with Japanese film and like Western um, and 90s action type. Um, pacing and mashup. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I have planned for that main book. All right. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm I'm pretty familiar with the script. I've been like I said, I've been working on it for a while now. So um, that's good. Is there any specific? I mean, I know you kind of briefly mentioned a couple, but is there any specific influences for this story? Is it something you've been working on a long time, or uh, you know, do you like have a bunch of stories and you said, okay, I'm going to pick this one to work with, or? So the way uh, the whole writing with the, this specific story came about is it actually wasn't my first choice. I have a lot of stories I want to tell. I've been coming up with them for a long time, um, watching movies uh, and playing like uh, tabletop RPGs. And I've been what's known as a forever DM. So I've been telling stories almost my whole life for at least 15 years. And then I went to school for art. So I thought I was going to be, um, I wanted to do working games and do game design and work my way into telling stories in video games. Um, but doing video games and movies takes a lot of money. And that's something I don't really have a lot of access to. So I was like, okay, well, I don't really want to do that. Um, I can move into something that's more manageable. And I kind of went back into comics. I hadn't really thought about comics for a while. My sort of um, had a weird relationship with them as a kid. Uh, I was forced. Okay. Yeah, my, my grandpa kind of forced me to read back in the day, and he gave me comic books to try and get me to read, and it didn't work, so I would just look at the pictures, and then I started tracing them on paper and kind of telling my own stories. And so then he started, he kind of got me into books, and from there I, I sort of got obsessed with, um, like, Stephen King, like, horror Stephen King. Like, I really liked this book, Insomnia, as a kid. But uh -huh. then I sort of just kind of got a love for um, telling telling weird stories and things that aren't necessarily what people would expect. And then I also fell in love with the 90s movies and all that stuff. But um, this story came about because I had other artists fall out. I was doing a book called um, Thing from Beyond the Black that was inspired by aliens. It was sort of a horror book. And I was kind of, there was a narwhal so people know narwhal from the community the cg community and stuff and he was doing a show where it was kind of like a writer's room and we all had this um kernel of a seed to work with it was sort of aliens um space zombies and marines it was like the basis premise to work off of and he created this completely different story and i, I um that got me sort of really really dedicated it's like no okay i really want to do this because i came up with a script in a short amount of time put it together and I was like, okay, I have these other script ideas that were sort of movie scripts, and we start working them into um, comic ideas and graphic novels. And so that's when I started, started learning the script, uh, comic script format. And then working with you, I've gotten a lot more tips on um, how to actually structure them and have key panels and like focusing on the turn and all that stuff, which is something I didn't really think about when I wanted to come from, uh, to this from like the, the whole movie, video game, like storytelling aspect. So, right. Um, is uh, a story that came originally from um, one of those games where I was actually a player and I created this character, Takeru, um, or at the time he just went by a moniker, Okuda Inu. Um, at the time he wasn't possessed or anything, he was a street sam uh, samurai in a game called Shadowrun, some people might know. It's one of the big inspirations for the whole universe, or the way I've structured it. And that's sort of where this character was, uh, was born, that was where this seed came from. And Ever since then, working on the script, um, thinking about merging them with this bounty hunter concept they had a long time ago, which is like this lone wolf thing, which fit the whole Japanese Okuri Inu angle, which that is sort of a Japanese hellhound that mm -hmm. other fear because um, it's so ferocious that it will take down anything. It doesn't matter if it's an evil spirit or um, a good or a good person or anything like that. It's just uh, indiscriminate in its chaos, which is sort of where the Hulk angle came in, that, that, that rage, that unstoppable rage that sort of tears down everything. I really like that concept. Yeah, well, it's definitely, I can, I can see the Shadowrun influence. I mean, I'm a, I'm an old school tabletop RPG player and tabletop strategy gamist. Um, I still love to play Necromunda. I'm not, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Games, old Games Workshop. Well, it's not so old now. They just released a, a new version of it. But uh, that, is, and as well as D&D, &D, Gamma World, Shadowrun, uh, Battletech's entry, which was Mech Warrior, I believe. 
Um, so yeah, a traveler, um, all those. So, but yeah, I definitely see the Shadowrun influence with it, and uh, it's really been uh, really been fun to draw. I like I like drawing. Um, I'm I'm gonna mess the name up. I always mess the name up, and don't take that personally. It's just I'm bad with names. No. But uh, Takudu, Takudu, Taku, go ahead, school me. Takudu. <laughs> Taku. It took Takudu. It took me Takudu. a while to learn how to right. say this stuff, and I'm probably saying it kind of wrong too. But right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's been a a blast to draw, being the focal point. Uh, all the other um. You know, supporting characters, um, especially Cleo. Cleo was fun. I was a little worried about drawing Cleo. I'm going to be honest with you, just because I have a character. I, I know that you're probably not familiar with it, but in the wreck, uh, it's basically a team, right? Um, it's called a phalanx team. And one of the characters, her name is Nikki. And Nikki looks a lot like Cleo. Um, same ethnicity, same type of hairdo, but Nikki likes to wear this, you know, those big bandanas, you know, to keep the hair back because most of the time she's wearing a helmet and, uh, she's very sassy. Uh, she's very tough and, um, she's got a chip on her shoulder. So, uh, but I, I think that with Cleo, we, we struck uh, a nice, you know, it, they're different enough that I, I'm not worried about it anymore. How about that? So, yeah, um, I love how I really, really like that character. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've got a picture of her just in case it's for for people watching or for the, I've got a bunch of these pictures up. I might it might be hit or miss here real quick. Um, yeah, there we go. There's Cleo. Um, this is um one of the one of the full page spreads in the book uh you want to you want to let the people in on like where you're at in the uh progress of the project um um what your schedule is what your future plans are um anything else like uh you want to mention colorist or anything like that the uh, the colorists uh, on the main book are the are the people from Barbusco Comics. It's um, Eduardo and Mika. Really They're, good stuff, um, by the way. Right now, yeah, I really love their colors of it. The way they do lighting is is really amazing, um, and I think it really matches the sort of like Western like sunset feel, especially with those first few pages and stuff. It it uh, very atmospheric. They're doing a great job, and they're also uh, Eduardo is drawing the um 30 page prologue in mika's coloring that as well um and that's coming along pretty good i think we're on page seven of that of the, those 30 pages and then we're just passing the halfway mark now in the main book um in terms of deadline like hard deadline um i was hoping to be able to launch you know, that early next year but i think it's probably gonna be more around December at the end of uh next year is what i'm hoping for mm -hmm. but i don't want to launch until i have everything in a row because i want this to just go out especially with all like all the i have so many books that i back that i'm still waiting for that i back a long time ago so i just don't want to be another one of those no that's a that's a very good point um that's one of the reasons why i haven't relaunched the wreck it's just because i need to find another colorist um and i just i haven't settled on one yet um and so many that's 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 the big killer that's that's the big killer that's the big that's the big obstacle for indie comics right now uh with crowdfunding is it takes so long to from the time that you run your campaign until the time that you deliver a book it's a long time and your backers are going to have to be cognitive of that, right? So that they understand. And and this is this is another reason why I like doing these these videos, because I I'd, I'd really like for people to understand 
what it takes to make a comic book because it's not it's not something you could just you know whip out right uh especially for writers you know yeah especially for writers because and i know that you do a little art too right You, you 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 might consider yourself an artist as well right but you decided to go uh, yeah. yeah no yeah <laughs> yeah 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 i do a little bit right but you decided to go the way of of hiring an artist to concentrate you know on the writing part and uh, have the artist do you know the, the actual putting pen to paper there and getting the images out and you know sometimes you're at the whim of the artist you know how slow or fast they are how much you're willing to give them slack based on you know uh how you feel you want your book to to look and, and things of that nature then you have the book's going to be in full color so you need a colorist they need time to do their work then you need a letter uh, a letterer right yeah. a, lot, a lot of indies don't use letterers because i feel like they feel they feel like they could do it themselves right but there is an art form to lettering yeah, whole art. Yeah. right exactly so you know, they need time to do their work too. And so once you get all that done and then you're going to send it to a printer and proofs have to be uh, done to make sure that they're going to come out the way you want. And then you got uh, ship, you know, packaging and shipping or fulfillment. It's a long process. It's not something that can be done overnight. And I think between the people that have it down and know how to do it, and the people that want to do it really badly, but they're not sure of all the ins and outs. And so it becomes a longer process. You know, sometimes you can lose viewerships that way. I mean, when I self-published back in the 80s and it was all about sending books off to a printer and getting them printed and spending that money even before you had any orders. I knew I knew right away that if you were late if you said your book was going to be bi-monthly, which back then meant you had one book come out every other month, um, mm-hmm. if it came out late, you lost between 500 to 1,000 readers. You wouldn't sell those books. Like the next pre, the next time Diamond and, Mul- uh, uh, Diamond and Multiverse and uh, who, was, who was the other ones? Um, uh, um, uh, Glenwood Distributors. Whenever they would pre-order your book, the numbers would always be down because you were late the book before. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the thing that I see a lot right now. And, and I know that, you know, it's a hard thing to do. And and I think you're doing it the right way, you know, I'm making sure you've, you're have you almost complete, right? I know it won't be fully complete, but to the point where people are not going to have to wait 12 months to get a book, right? So... Yeah. Uh, and I think that's probably your your goal, right? If I if I had to guess, yeah, especially for being a new creator, it's also why I'm doing the thirty page prologue um, and just getting that out there because I want people to get that sort of that that taste and realize that I am putting effort into it. And this isn't something that I just want to. Um, it's not like a quick buck. I have structured this specific character, not like not even to mention all the other stories that ideas I have, but this character. It's sort of, you have the prologue, which is that like introduction to the character, a little bit of origin, and it uh, sets up for the time, a big time jump, about 10 years, where he's doing bounty hunter stuff out there in the universe. And then he comes back to Japan in this main book, and sort of that like man on fire mission. Um, when that arc, because that's just the first stakes, it's very personal. The first book is a personal stakes, and the stakes will keep getting more intense until it's, say, like a universal threat sort of thing. Right. But then, once that story's done, because it's a story that I have that's uh, complete, I know what my beats are already, what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I can go back if people really like this character and um, I'm, I'm putting in the same effort that I'm putting in making it and they enjoy it, what they're getting out of it. Um, I can go back to that 10 year gap and tell like the bounty hunter stories. Like I have a, um, a series called The Guild, which is like, will be um, Takeru and. Um, all these crazy things that happen uh, and sort of like a Star Wars-esque bounty hunter sort of um, Boba Fett type uh, story, like little shorts and stuff, which I think will be really fun to go to. So I have a future planned. So right, right. Not right. Stop. 
All right. Well, we, we do have one person in the chat right now. Uh, Fred Richards. Hey, man. Thanks for, for showing up. Um, let me know if you have any problems with the stream. Um, I'm kind of looking at it right now. It seemed to be a little bit of buffering going on. I'm not sure why. Um, so I'm looking at the console here to see what's going on. Got an error. It's telling me it's not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, but, um, let's see. He wants to, uh, uh, Fred, Fred, are you, uh, Fred, are you, uh, I only know you by CSD. Is that you? Uh, if that's you, the commission is finished. I just need to send you what I have done and uh, for you to sign off on it and we'll be good to go. I'll do that later tonight after I get done here. So if that's you, because I don't know you by Fred Richards. So, <laughs> so, well, getting back to uh, the, um, the uh your, your project i noticed that you've been doing you've been commissioning a lot of work you've you've got i think you have a cover i'm going to assume that's going to be the cover or it's an alternative cover um the one by Kanan white yeah that's going to be i wanted to do a virgin cover really bad like an exclusive virgin cover for the indiegogo so that way like um there was some exclusivity to in the, the indiegogo campaign um uh, on top of you'll get hopefully the 30 page printed as well through that and that won't be something i print out but uh, the canaan one is a virgin cover and then there's another um alt cover that i got by um oliver i think it's isabedra i don't know if I'm, I'm probably saying that wrong but um that'll be an alt cover um that gets uh, that i'll sell after the indiegogo as well as um your cover those will be the two um, so I want to try and get them into like local stores out here in Arizona, at least, um, and possibly other stores after uh, the Indiegogo campaign and stuff. So, yeah, yeah I think yeah, that Indiegogo. right. Yeah, I think I saw that. I think I saw that cover. I think that was one of the ones you sent me. I don't have it pulled up. I know it's in Discord, but if I go and pull up the Discord, I'm going to lose your camera on my feed. <laughs> I'm too cheap, I man. Like I don't use Steam Streamlab or or what? It, what was it? Uh, yeah. Stream yards, I think. Stream There's yards, also yeah. a stream lab. Video. There's what? There's also a stream labs too. There's a um, a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I'm I'm too cheap to use stream yards, so, um, yeah. So I I have this set up, and if I go and pop a different thing on Discord, it's gonna I'm gonna lose your camera. So, but I know that you have the that other cover, and then uh, the the um kind of the primer that you said you had um that the colorist and the artist team uh husband and wife right or girlfriend and boyfriend yeah, or like that. yeah that they are working on uh what is that called again what was the name of that so that's okuri inu tokyo blues, tokyo so blues. Only with right right um so i don't have any of those up here um what what I've done is I've got the cane and white uh, cover up, and then I think this is your this is actually the splash page for the book, uh, page one, and this is what I did, and I, I think this is your a promo image for your Indiegogo for your uh, um, mailing list, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, you post that on your Twitter, right? Your where they can sign yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah, so my pinned tweet has this long sort of thread of just a, so all, like not all of the commission stuff I've had done, but a lot of the commission stuff I've had done. Um, and on the very bottom, I think the last one in the thread is the actual mailing list. Um, I'm going to make a new pinned tweet at some point here soon, but I just wanted to keep that up for a while, show off all those commissions. That's um, 
those actually I plan on releasing in the art book as one of the stretch goals. Um, if it doesn't meet the stretch goal in the Indiegogo campaign, I'll still do it down the line. But uh, it is sort of one of the bigger stretch goals I want to I want to play around with. Right, right. And has uh, oh we got we have, we have uh, another viewer here the the the, the cloth I'm the cloth the cloth yeah, the yeah. Cloth. So, uh, how you doing, man? Uh, good. Good to see you here. Glad you stopped in. If you got any questions for Corey, just feel free to pop them in there. Uh, Fred, yeah, it, it did drop for a minute. Uh, YouTube is doing some weird shit on me here. It's got uh, a couple buffering issues going on through my console, so I'm hoping it just hangs on long enough. Uh, we're going to go for about an hour here. So, uh, so yeah, uh, feel free to ask questions to Corey about the project, uh, what inspired him. Um, what made him decide to get in the crazy business of writing comics? I know <laughs> a lot of people do it. People have stories to tell. Um, and you're right. You mentioned this earlier. I have a very good friend, uh, that we we've worked on a story together. We just haven't put it out yet. It's called go to hell. His name is John LaChase. He's a screenwriter and he's never written a comic book before and he wasn't sure about how to do the script but we worked it out uh i kind of gave him different ideas of how to write scripts there's there's many different ways to write comic scripts i'm sure uh, talk to different writers they're going to come up with all different kind of ideas of what they do how they do it um but what i like to do and, and, and this is something you could touch on too since we're working together I like for the the actual final product to be kind of like a collaboration. Not that as the artist, I want to take over your story. I don't want to, I don't, you know, I don't want to retell your story. Like it's your story and I want you to tell it the way you want to. But every once in a while, you know, I'll have like an idea I think might work better as far as the visuals go of, yeah. you know, the way a page lays out or the pacing or, you know, Someone, uh, comic artist, a long time ago. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. His name's Howard Chaikin. Okay, he wrote and drew American Flag, way back in the day in the eighties. And he told me, he said every page has to be its own condensed story. Right, you have to have a beginning of the page and the end of the page usually. And if you could tell your story that way in visual form, sequential form you'll have a successful book because you'll be able to tell the story. But so I've always kept that in mind. And, and uh, so tell me how you, you, this is your first time working on a comic and especially working on a comic with an, an artist. How, how has that experience been for you? What, what do you think? What have you learned and, and, or what have you done in the past that you've been able to, uh use during this experience so uh yeah coming from the movie thing to the comic script and having to work with an artist has been pretty awesome actually um i thought it was gonna be a lot harder than it was from being honest when i was coming into it i thought because some of the experiences i had before like ghosting and um stuff like that i thought like it uh it'd be hard and i heard some horror stories when i was in um, college the second time about just uh either editors or artists trying to like ch change people's stories like you had just said that which I've never felt like you had tried to do at all I've, um or even um the Barbusco team they haven't I haven't felt like they try to change anything either it's been very like you said I, I'm learning to do the cooperative thing because before I feel like I was very you know it has to be this exact way these little details have to all be this perfect um you know set up this perfect way or whatever but it was it's not the perfect way because I would is my first comic script so there's obviously better ways to lay things out and stuff which is why i'm glad that um you, you brought those things up you didn't just like take what i had down and do it straight to that you've helped me sort of see like you know this is why you might want to do this this way instead of the way you had it or, and stuff like that so it's actually been a really really good experience um having someone with experience to sort of lean on um it's uh, been helpful right really helpful right well i mean uh... That's good. That's good to know. It's good to know for me. That way I know I'm not stepping on toes or you're not cursing me behind my back, you know, <laughs> every time I send you a suggestion. But um, 
I think it's coming. It's been a really good experience uh, working with you as well. Um, you're you're open to suggestions, which is really good. Uh, I've worked with people in the past where they're very, they're very tight. They're like, this is this is how I want it done, and do not deviate type of thing. And that just makes it very difficult sometimes because I might lay some pencils down on a paper and, and I just don't like it. Like it's just not working for me, but you know, that's what the client wants. So that's what the client gets. So, but let's see the cloth says, uh, he says, uh, I usually try to end each page with a cliffhanger. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a way to go. And that's, and that tends to work, you know, it's all, as long as it doesn't mess with your pacing, of your mm -hmm. storytelling, I, I, you know, you can do that. And, um, like I said, as long as the page is kind of like its own little self, self-contained story. And I don't mean a story that's very deep or anything. It's just that yeah, there's a beginning, okay. a middle and an end. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think, I think you'd be good to go. So, so uh... go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, I, so I don't, I, I do, I've learned to do that a little bit. Where I look at things as the page itself, but then I also like to look at the spread of what the two pages will look like next to each other too, and sort of. Yeah. yeah I, I did, that's been one of the funner things to kind of learn and figure out um, in this process. No, exactly. That's that's one of the things that because a page that ends on a page turn is a lot different than a page that ends where you just have to look look over to your right and you see the next page. Yeah, right? yeah big difference and uh you basically don't want to cut your action in the middle you know on a page turn you you want it to lead into either more action or resolution or something like that so um but yeah i, th I think you're getting the hang of it and like i said you're always open to suggestions uh it makes it very easy on me as the artist and so um have you um what about Let's talk about, since I do want to kind of have this stream be about, you know, if other people want to do comics and some of the things that they can think about when they're trying to create their project. And that is, where did you find, where did you find, like, what part of the process did you decide, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to hire an artist instead of doing it myself. And then... Where did you find the artist? I mean, I know, but it'd be good for you to tell people how you did it. And then, uh, you know, colorist, letterer, uh, and then talk, talk a little bit. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Just start with that. <laughs> I don't want to overwhelm you. So, um, so, uh, sorry, I just, uh, the first part was, uh, how did I, um, well, what, what, sorry, what? Just, yeah, what, what made you decide that you're going to kind of delegate the workload of the project instead of you just oh, okay. writing and drawing it yourself and all that? And what made you decide that? That's the first part, I guess. So, so uh, that was actually just in school. Um, I sort of like what you said, if you're, when you draw something, you just don't like what you, what you put down. I, I don't think I was skilled enough realistically to do a book, the book I wanted to do. So I figured I'd just focus on writing and then, yeah, like you said, find an artist, but then how do you do that? It, that, it took a long time. I started doing this in 2015 uh -huh. and I didn't, you know, I didn't find you till 2019 or was it eight, late 18? I can't remember now. I think, exactly. it, was, I think it was 2019. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I started looking on um, like, you know, your deviant art and those sort of sites. Um, and was just reaching out to everybody and, and like i was i i would look specifically for, for people who had sequentials in their um like on their page for display and then if i really liked someone's art I'd, I'd, I'd ask them like hey um is this something you'd be interested in but doing that you get a lot of like no i'm either i'm busy or like you know that's not my skill set and eventually i found someone off of one of those sites but then they ended up sort of ghosting me and then I almost gave up at that point, but then the whole thing happened on Twitter with, with CG where artists, it felt like people were all trying to help each other succeed and stuff. And mm -hmm. it was, I saw, uh, I think the first thing I saw of yours was actually, um, 
the rec cover, the pencil rec cover that you had. Oh, right. I think it was your fifteen tweet. I think it's the first thing I saw, and I remember seeing that at the point and being like, "Okay, I wanna, I wanna hit this guy up." And then, sort of kept going, did some other things, and then there was another thing you posted. I think it was the Jack Irons, one of the Jack Irons pieces you did mm-hmm. for someone. Mm-hmm. I think one of the first ones, and I was like, "Okay, yeah." And I think I sent you a message on Twitter. Isn't Twitter how I reached out to you? Yeah. 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 Yeah, because I'm pretty sure for, from that point on, after I had gotten ghosted from Deviant artists, um, artists from Deviant, Art, I had sort of been like, okay, well, now that there's this sort of hotbed of artists um, that I know are looking for work and are hungry and sort of either have experience or or have a lot to like sequential arts to, to sort of show that they're serious about it. So, yeah, that's how I found an artist, but that's definitely a, a, probably the biggest challenge that I faced because that took years yeah 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 it's been i know i've been working on your project for a couple years now but that's only because Mm -hmm. you're trying to do it the right way i mean you you know you you want to make sure you get the stuff near completion before you go you know with live with your campaign um but yeah that's the horror stories i've heard on twitter about you know, writers trying to get artists to do work and they're all gung ho at the beginning. And then they, when they find out how much work it actually is, yeah, yeah. you know, um, then it kind of trails off a little bit, you know? So that's, uh, yeah, that's, that tends to be one of the major hurdles for, for people trying to, to do their, their own project. So how about, um, Colors, because I know you, you're going color with the book, and I'm I would be interested to know how you, how you went about finding your colorist because I really like them, I think they're good, uh, and I've had trouble finding colorist um, wow. for for my stuff, and it's not just I talked to Cal, I don't know if you know Cal Jameson yeah, and Rob Willis, yeah, yeah, I've talked to them about Shinobi Sasquatch and. Um, and I agree with them when they say you have to find a colorist that works well with the, with the line art, right? Not all yeah. colors can color everything. Like some are really good at very clean line art. And then you have kind of more dirty, rough, uh, line art for final art. And yeah. you, you have to find, excuse me, you have to find colors that, that, that look that look good with what you're doing, right? There's, there's all kinds. So I'd be curious to, to, to hear uh, what your process was for that and, and, and how you ended up finding who you have now. So uh, the colors, I actually had gotten the uh, first character design done by Rob Willis for the Takeru. And um, I had posted that and um, said like, you know, I'm looking for a colorist here. And I had colored it, like done some rough colors on it, uh, very saturated colors because I'm not a colorist. And uh, eventually, uh, Scotsman hit me up, and Andrew Pate hit me up, and then another guy, I can't remember his name right now, hit me up, and they all did um, different colors of it. And that's how I got the first colorist, Andrew Pate. And he he's a good colorist, but it, I felt as the more pages came in, it was sort of the cell shading wasn't working the way, the way and I just didn't fit the type of story I wanted to tell. It almost seems too bright. Um, and so I was playing around with other colorists, and that's I've met um, Barbusco. They shared something, and there was like they were working on a comic. I think it was a short, um, and there was a couple pages that they had posted, and then there was color posted with it. And I um, hit them up, and they're like, "Yeah, we do both." And I, so I had them do um, a couple pieces. I did a card set actually with them too. I have like a card, it's like a fantasy um, card game kind of inspired by Kazakh from Star Wars that they did that okay. I was going to release a future future project. It's just something I really wanted to get done at the time. But uh, that, so that's kind of how I met them. And then I gave them that first page that you're showing, um, like the page one or whatever, the main book, the okay. Splash. Yeah. On it. Um, and when they when that came back, yeah, just the atmosphere, like I mentioned before, was kind of exactly what I wanted from that sort of like sunset or um, sunrise feel. And uh, they ended up doing, I think, Sunrise, and it just looked really, really good. And so that's kind of how I ended up uh, finding 
the artist or the colorist sort of just kind of fell into place but that that too is kind of a struggle um because yeah you're right like some colors it's yeah they can hinder um the way certain types of line work um is laid out yeah i have uh, i have a um yeah you probably won't see it right the second it'll pop up here in a minute but i have some uh line art final line art page that um was done page seven and i wanted to show it's not the right one hold on uh and then you'll see the color you'll see the color version pop up here in a minute now is this this is the is it bar bar Barbos? i think it's barbusco barbusco uh I believe it is because uh, this is the one you sent me um, and I think this is the uh, final colors or whatever. Uh, just give it a minute. I know it's delayed. You're at a disadvantage because you can't see what I'm doing. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's them right there. But, um, yeah, I think it popped up now. You might be able to see it. Um, mm -hmm. When I saw these pages, uh, especially the ones that where he's in this situation, and I don't want to give away his story, but he's in this situation. I was really impressed with the way that uh, they did the overall coloring and the lighting uh, with the spark here and the uh, missile firing and stuff. And then the following pages with the, uh, with the dragon. So yeah, I, I was really impressed with their, with their coloring work, especially over my stuff. I thought it worked pretty well. Um, so, yeah, I love that that page. I mean, I, uh, I love everything they're doing, but the way they did that, like, so that blur, the motion blur on the rocket firing on the hand and stuff, it just turned out really good. Yeah, and that's something that they they worked out because that's not like I showed the the line art before. Um, that's not the way it was actually drawn on the line art. Uh, it's 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 pretty much just black and white line art, and uh, so them doing that. That's what made me even more um, conscious of things later on in the book, Th things like holograms and gunfire, muzzle flashes, explosions, <laughs> of putting those things on a separate layer within the file so that they could do those things, you know, and uh, not have to worry about messing with the actual line art you know they, they they could do it they could do it on their own or however they saw fit to do it because i was i was really impressed with the way they were doing it so and then yeah i really i really like them yeah yeah good stuff um so after the then you still have lettering so what made you decide that you didn't want to do the lettering yourself like so many people decided they're going to do and actually hire a letterer? And especially the one that you say that uh, you've lined up? You want to talk yeah, about that? So Eric, Eric Weathers, um, he's already done some test pages and um, he told me he's really excited to get the full script when it's all um, said and done. Um, that was a really cool experience and that's actually what made me realize that yeah i don't want to do this myself is because i had already done a couple mock-up pages at one point and it, it just doing it was took me one it took me a long time and two it didn't look good i had to be honest with myself okay um, i was like yeah i just i'm gonna go see if i can get another letter and at the time eric weathers this is you know early when all the stuff was early picking up um he was just getting hit up by a bunch of people so then i sort of got in with him and got to know him a little bit and um realized yeah no it's definitely an, an art to the lettering and we like leading the eye and have the, the colors and the shape and everything and like um because i didn't opt in to do the sound effects in the art i wanted to do it in the lettering right um which i think maybe in the next ones i might i might change just because after seeing other books i kind of like the look of that but uh i there's some stuff Eric did on those early pages that I um, got done just for, just for a test where um, 
we can have it like sit in the world and i just i like the way it looks like it pops a lot mm-hmm. and so i'm kind of torn between the two styles because they both look really good because like the aliens books that i uh, grew up reading and tracing and looking at <laughs> they all have like the in the art and stuff and i just i guess that's something i never really thought about when i transitioned into the comic script thing which is another thing you gotta right. think about and learn yeah that's um it can be done both ways and it really just depends on your letterer like you know are they capable of doing it and are they good at it or also up to the artist can they you know because doing lettering doing type in a graphical way and um you know uh making it look like a part of the scene can be very difficult and so you know you gotta be careful about that it looks like uh scotsman tv is in the chat uh yeah welcome welcome uh thanks for showing up got any questions for for, uh for Corey? just uh shout them out in the chat i'm sure you'd be happy to answer him we're talking about his project right now uh his project that i'm also working on so um get a double whammy there um so you said that uh, eric did some test pages or whatever now i'm going to be totally selfish here i'm curious uh is my artwork and panel layout something that he can work with or was he uh saying wishing he had something different there to work with. No, um, he actually uh, appreciated that there was space for stuff. Cause I had sent over like, this is where sort of the space was for where we had thought things go. And he actually appreciated that we were thinking about where dialogue is going to go. Cause I guess a lot of people in that time in the earlier um, spaces were kind of just filling everything up and there was no space to put stuff without covering. So he actually really um, appreciated that. So that's feedback I did get from him. Right. Which is well, that's good. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. To know. Yeah, because I, I I remember when I was doing, you know, I I published two two of my own titles in the eighties. I'm sure I've talked about this a bazillion times. I'm tired of it already, but I was doing everything. I was writing. I was drawing. I was inking because this is all before digital. And I was doing the lettering with a little Ames lettering guide and a T square. You know. Uh, I don't know if you know what an Ames lettering guide is, but, you know, a little thing that puts down the, the guidelines for your lettering. And uh, then you have to go in with a, either a pin or a brush and and do the lettering that way. And, oh, my God, I hated it. Uh, <laughs> but at the time, I was only 20, 21 years old, and, you know, I didn't have any money. So I, I had to do everything myself. So, But uh, Fred asked, do you have... Do you have a reference for different lettering designs? So uh, maybe you can see what the difference is. Uh, no, I personally don't have anything because I'm not doing the lettering. So um, I don't really have any examples. Uh, Eric Weathers has done a lot of indie books, especially for ComicsGate. And all you have to do is pick. I don't know. I can't. I don't want to name off anything and get it wrong, but... I believe he did all of Richard Meyer's books, or at least most of them, like Jawbreakers and things. Maybe I think all the Cyber Frog, all the Cyber Frog stuff uh, he's done, and so he 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 is a true professional letterer, and uh, Corey's going to get his money's worth, that's for sure. So um, I can't wait to see some of these final pages with the lettering done on them right now. Yeah. But um, everything is looking great so far, man, and uh, I'm having a blast working on it. Um, I think we have, we're 32 pages in. Uh, I have to look at the script again. Uh, how many actual script pages are there? Do you remember? Uh, it's a total, of, yeah, the total is 60. Total is 60. So we're a little over halfway through. Um, but... Uh, that's all just because we're slow and steady wins the race. Want to make sure, uh, Corey wants to make sure you get everything kind of towards the finish line before he goes with the campaign. Um, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Uh, do you have plans for the campaign? Um, you want to share maybe some of your thoughts on 
tiers, reward tiers, and stretch goals if they're going to be any, or do you plan on do you plan on going on in demand, or are you just going to cut it off at the campaign end fulfillment, or, or what do you think? So for the for the first campaign, I want to do in demand, and just because I want the reach to be out there for the first book as much as possible, I might play around with um, cutting it off later just to see if that is the like, exclusivity. Um, will help once people know know about the project but i'm kind of leaning more towards just in demand the just kind of store option um in terms of tiers i already mentioned the stretch goal wise that i want to do that art book um i want to do another stretch uh goal where i have the tokyo blues um printed as sort of like a floppy and or an ash can um or not an ash can the ash can would be the the uh the epilogue sorry there's an epilogue uh written by von klaus that i got back uh, a little while ago Okay. That, uh, the, the writer of Monster MD, he did yeah. the uh, epilogue story for the villain. Um, give you a little insight into his motivations and his story after the main book. Um, and then I have a tier that I want to do that's the drawn in tier, right? Where we do kind of like just a simple character of somebody, and that'll come with some original art um, as well. But I plan on doing pretty simple, bare bones campaign. I just some extra printed material. I want to do one patch just because I like patches and I'm like collecting the patches. So I want to do a patch for me and not shave like Valkyrie and anyone <laughs> else who wants it. And um, uh, I wanted to do a sticker pack too, but I, I was thinking besides maybe like a metal card or a metal print beyond that, that's kind of bare bones. Just want the books. Um, there'll be like the three covers. Like I said, I'll, um, if you want to do a cover, there'll be a cover of yours. Then there'll be the exclusive um Virgin cover with Canaan's art, and then that uh, an alternate cover. So there'll be three. But I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of um, a bunch of covers. I just kind of wanted the first one to have um, some options, and I want the Indiegogo's to have exclusive covers as well. Right. So I think that's important. right. Well, I can tell you right now, I'm interested in doing a cover because if I'm doing the meat of the book, I kind of like to have a you know my own okay. cover on there too. You know <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I want to assume, and I think you had mentioned it. We talked about it before, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so on the on the campaign, have you been in contact with other people who have done Indiegogos and independent books uh, to try to get a feel for all of the hiccups that might pop up while you're doing a campaign, or even post? campaign uh fulfillment things like that have been uh, has the community the independent comic community been pretty uh i don't know if, um, what i want to say uh um loose with oh, their cool. information you know like be able to share those things with you for the most part yeah actually um uh, so if, i think it's still on his twitter but rob arnold from the replicator Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you uh go to his twitter and look at his bio or a pinned tweet there might be still a, a document that he has made which sort of goes over a lot of um these and don'ts problems that pop up all the things you just said that will really help um people and i'm also um i talk to people like brian from the era saga i talk to people like the critical blast guy who does doing um fulfillment for people he's done some books i can't remember off the top of my head which exact books he's helped fulfill but there's been successful fulfillment through him and um also um oh, where was i going I lost my train of thought for a second um yeah and like my people like michael bancroft like the, the community the, the the whole community has been pretty helpful i haven't had any real problems with people um that i've been meeting on twitter through this sort of sphere of like CG and other indie creators that are sort of in, in the area. Um, right. Yeah. I don't, everyone's been super nice and helpful. You just got to ask um, yeah. and be patient with people. Don't, you know, don't, don't get mad because someone doesn't either give you the information that you want or the criticism that you want, or if they don't reply right away, like we're all super busy with not only doing this comic book stuff, but we all have real lives, obviously. So right. Right. Yeah. be patient with people and constantly reach out, you know, try not to bug people, but, um, yeah, just kind of remind people that you're around and ask and ask ask people questions. Well, I think that um, I've got uh, something I want to 
touch on, but I want to. Scotsman says, oh, I will be able to finish up your pinup finally in the next day or so. Finally finished up all the blood and now working on the chrome. So there you go. That thing's going to be sweet. Yeah. Uh, the stuff you can show me for that is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think I've seen his stuff on Twitter. Scotsman. Um, yeah, looking forward to seeing that, man. Seeing what you do. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, follow up on what you're talking about with helpful. Uh, other creators being helpful. I think in order for in the independent comic industry to survive and thrive, uh, people who have got the experience in doing that, I really feel like it'll only get better if they do share those things. Now, they have no obligation to share, obviously. Uh, but, you know, if you really want the independent community to survive, it, it has to be a thing where we can share, you know, okay, where did you get your stuff printed at? Where, who did you fulfill it? You know, all, all these things because, uh, and not just the big guys, you know, not just the big, I don't know how to put it, the big, more well-known independents, you know, like Ethan and John Malin and, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, it has to be the little guys too. The guys that are only making 10 grand a campaign or whatever. Um, because not everybody's going to have, you know, five to 10,000 backers and, you know, six figure uh, campaign. So, and so I think say not only that, that, go ahead. I say marketing is it's marketing your yeah. book and doing like the fulfillment. Those are their own two skill sets. And like, people get paid to do that a lot you know on its own too so there's a lot of stuff to think about in that regard oh yeah absolutely absolutely and uh that's one of the reasons why i think a lot of people they want to get into it right away but they don't realize just how much work is involved you know what i mean so um it's good to share all that information so um I really, I mean, I, I think we've touched on a lot of stuff here. I, I don't want to go too far over an hour. I know that's usually what the program is, but um, is there any, would you have any piece of advice for somebody wanting to do their own project? I've never done it before whatsoever. Either uh, advice as a writer trying to get their project done or yeah. um, maybe a writer artist or a letterer, an independent letterer that wants to get in on the, on the action, you know, work on independent comics or whatever. Is there, you know, you, you got any advice for, for those people? So, yeah, I do have, I do have one thing that's helped me. Um, one piece of advice I was given that helped me get through like, you know, those walls or whatever you want to call them, those, those blocks. Um, yeah, I think this will work for artists and letters and stuff too, but it was given to me from a writer for, for writing is that you don't don't get hung up on something small and get like bent out of shape and, and, and give up or or keep coming back to that one spot and trying to break through that wall. Go past it and just keep keep putting stuff down because eventually thinking about things in like the bigger picture can help you figure out that smaller wall and break it. And um, if that if there you do find walls that um, you can't break, physical activity. <laughs> go running, uh I picked up skating, but uh, work out, get the, the heart pumping. That also can help you break those walls. But that's probably my, my two biggest pieces of advice is stay active and keep keep pushing through. Don't 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 ever stop and get like stagnant and mm -hmm. stuck on one thing. Yeah, no, that's a good piece of advice. I mean, uh, I, as an artist, I deal with that quite a bit. Um, just getting stuck on something and, and like working on a project with you or with anybody for that matter, but it's relatable because I'm talking to you. And that is if I, if I usually get stuck on a layout or whatever, and you know this, I mean, you can attest to it, but um, I just, I'll just run a bunch of ideas by you to try to get different eyes on it. And I usually can, can work past it that way. Cause either you'll give me a good idea that I can play off of, or me just working through that many ideas and eventually you know, settling on something. So, so I think your piece of advice is, is a good piece of advice. So yeah, I just keep plugging away. Um, it's never been as easy 
as it is right now to self-publish graphic novels. It really, it, it's really never been easier. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I could tell you that from experience having published back in the 1980s when it was very difficult, <laughs> very difficult to do it on your own back then because you had to come up with all the money up front. You had to find a printer. You had to market. You had to get a hold of distributors on your own with handwritten letters. There was no email. No social, no social media. To There's no post social. On to. Yep. No social media for uh, marketing purposes. Um, and believe me, I only use social media for marketing because it's a fucking shit storm. But you know. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but. Um, but yeah, so if you're gonna do it, now's the time to do it. You just you gotta want to do it, right? You gotta want to do it and, and make a plan, make a plan, and just execute that plan. And uh, uh, as long as it's not complete garbage, I mean, you, you should do well. I mean, at least you'll do well enough so that you can get your your idea out there and your project out there. And uh, and who knows, you could take off. You could be the next. Uh, I don't know, somebody who sells a lot, <laughs> which is, there's been quite a few. Let's see, uh, Fred's asking, how long do you write your scripts? Hourly, per day, and time spent total? I time spent total would be would be rough, but um, per day, I probably try and at least get five hours in total, like even if it's in block, a block before and after I get home from work or whatever. And I don't always um, stay on the same script. Like I mentioned before, that one of the things with a, if I hit a wall, I'll go to a different story, either in the same like universe, um, or I'll just go back to one of my other ones that I have that's uh, completely different and more grounded in reality and sort of just keep writing at least five hours a day. On my days off, I try to do like a full eight hour shift, um, but I can get... I can get burnt out pretty easily if I do more than that. I've I've discovered. So I, I tried to do on my days off where I would write just like all day and not move, but that was burning me out. So yeah, I try to keep it around um, eight hours on my days off and five on the days I work mm -hmm. if I can. And how much do you um, do? You, do you edit your own scripts or do you have somebody? Do you have somebody to read over what you've written? Not just, and I don't mean for like story wise like oh is the story any good but i just mean like you know technical. technical things do you do you have anybody that actually does editing as far as that goes so now I've, i have a couple people one of them people know um kimo sabe he's read the prologue story and um helped me edit that and i, I have editors now thanks to this community before i had um a couple but one was the whole thing where they didn't realize how much work it would be uh -huh. um, and they, and they just like, hey, I can't, I can't do this. And then another person was actually the whole like CG, the political thing. So oh. they, uh, like, oh, I, can't, I don't want to be around this, even if, you know, I said like, well, if we make a fake name or whatever, but they just were uncomfortable um, with the whole mob thing. So um, I had a couple, and then there was a time where yeah, I was editing it, editing it, editing it by myself, which I know is not good, especially because I have like dyslexia and um, stuff like that. So yeah, I know I had to definitely get someone to do that, but I, I have. A couple people now, chemo, and then I got a friend um, from school who can look up, uh, look over like the technical aspects of um, like the dialogue and stuff like that. So, yeah, luckily I have people to help me now. Right, right. Well, that's good. That's good. That's uh, because you're right. It's hard to edit your own stuff because the, you don't catch yeah. little things, you know, and uh, that's not something you want translated to the page. Yeah. Because by then it's too late. Because then you've got the artist redoing things too, right? And uh, just, it becomes expensive and time consuming. So, totally understand. Uh, I'm apologizing for my snipples right now. I'm just uh, getting I'm over. Worried. I'm getting over. My throat gets dry. The freaking sore throat. So, um, so I don't know who's left in chat. If you guys have any questions for uh, for Corey, uh, now would be a good time. Um, I know there's some. I know that there was kind of one other thing I wanted to ask you and something I've asked everybody um, that I've had, by the way, and for anybody watching this later, anybody watching it right now, I do have some past 
uh, streams where I've talked to other creators about their projects. Uh, Corey mentioned Von Klaus. Uh, I had him on the channel. We talked about Monster MD. Uh, now he's doing another book, uh, which was, I kid you not, I kid you not. Okay, I've been talking to another writer, and we had we had talked about maybe doing a a um, what do you call it, public domain character, right? Mm -hmm. And we looked at Black Terror or Terror, okay. and then he's doing like he's doing it. He popped it up, and I'm like, damn it. But it looks awesome. Like what he's got done so yeah. far, it looks really good. Um, so jealous of that guy at Monster MD was really good. And uh, but um, we have other people on there: Rob Willis, uh, Kyle Jameson. We had Mutt Man, Macho Dan for their book Hero. Uh, uh, Cody, uh, Cody Fernandez for Jack Irons. So a bunch of videos. Uh, if you get a chance, go check them out. Lots of good information in there. Talking about basically making comic books. Kind of like what we're doing here. But what I did want to ask you is, do you have any? After doing it now, for and you've been doing it, you know, we've been on this project for a couple of years now. And I'm sure you've been working on scripts before that. Do you have any regrets of diving into it or are you just are you anxious to get to the end to see what happens and see how how your story and and, and everything's received or are you nervous about it uh what's your general thoughts on this whole process so far so first off i'm definitely not uh regretful of anything for doing it it's mm -hmm. definitely a lot of work i got some gray in my goatee now uh, for <laughs> right. doing it well. but um Hey, you don't have near as much as I have in my beer. Okay, so but go ahead. Sorry, I interrupt you. But no, you're good. It's uh, but it's definitely a lot of work, and it's it's stressful, and there's definitely anxiety and like, because you know I uh I, I want this to be a fun, action-packed book with some humor, a little bit of romance, like a, a tiny bit of romance. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, there's definitely you worry about how certain things are going to be received because I know like. Let's just take Yuki, for instance. She's got like half of her head shaved, right? Uh -huh. And long hair on the other side. So that is just a trope that people have begun to like, as soon as they see it, they're the turned undercut. off by it. Yeah. Yeah. So it just... Um, but she has a good excuse. Like she, she has a good excuse, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, don't want people to write her off just yet. She has a good excuse. So um, I'm not too worried about that one. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're just things like that. Um, and yeah, how the story will be received. Do people get the same thing from it that, that I feel it delivers? You know, that there's definitely that anxiety there, but I'm excited to get to the end and to just have something in my hands that I know, like a physical thing in my hands that I know other people can have in theirs. Right. Um, and there's all these steps to it because, like, when Tokyo Blues becomes a PDF that I hand out to people, the feedback from that is going to be amazing too so it's not just the physical thing but that's just like a whole nother level of sort of like in my mind at least my monkey brain holding on to it means right. a lot more than the digital right no well there's something to be said for that you know it's um you always feel a sense of accomplishment and especially if you have something physical you can put that in a little bag and put it on your shelf and i still have mine i still have I still have my No Ninja Man number one published in 1987, and I still have number one through uh, one through five, or one through six, one through six of Nightmasters that was published between 1985 and 1988, and I have physical copies of those. I actually have there's five copies of those in the Library of Congress because. In the old day, that's how you had to, I think you might still have to apply for a copyright that way. Um, but they, yeah, they have five copies of each issue in the Library of Congress. So uh, it's like, if nothing else, at least I know that those things are there and will always be there, at least on microfish or something, right? So yeah, there's a lot, but a big sense of accomplishment and uh, uh, can't wait for you to, to feel that for your project. So yeah. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just, uh, I was just, uh, just con con uh, commenting on that feeling yes. of the physical book. So 
Now, I did want to ask yeah, you, you. You did say something. Yeah. The uh, the uh, the what did you say? It was ten page. The uh, is that Tokyo Blue? Is that right? Tokyo Blues is actually Blues. yeah. Tokyo Blues. Uh, the prologue is actually th it's thirty pages. Oh, so it's thirty it's, pages. Okay. Uh, it's full size is floppy that, or more than a full size floppy. Right. Is that a? I don't know. You you might have said it. I don't remember. Was that a giveaway, or are you going to sell that digitally, or? No, it's actually a giveaway. I'm going to give that out for free. It's going to be like a little sort of like you know drug dealers first tip is free sort right, of thing. Right. And it's that way if people people can kind of get a feel for one my writing style, and two the character in general because it's going to be, um, sort of an origin story. There'll be three pages that are, or four pages that are like him as a kid. Um, there's a setup of uh sort of the universe in there, like what the universe is about and the, the main story is going to be about. It sort of has all those uh, kernels um, in there for like setup and what the main story is about, who the character is, my writing style. And that's that's why I'm giving it away for free. And I think new creators could benefit from having something to pass around instead of just saying like, oh, I'm doing this thing that's coming out at this time. And you know, so giving someone something is always more powerful than just saying, no, I I've got this thing. No, you're you're right, uh, Cody, um, with Jack Iron stuff. That's what he did. He his first issue, black and white, was a, a freebie, digital freebie. And I think it helps, like you said, I think it helps kind of establish that, you know, what you're writing about, what the character's about, kind of gives people a little taste of what the final product is going to be that you're going to offer for sale. And believe me, I've thought about that quite a bit with uh, my my thoughts on, you know, doing the wreck eventually. And because the wreck, uh, what I had campaigned in 2019 um, was a 32-page primer, so basically what I called a primer. Um, and I was only selling it for seven bucks on the campaign. But that's bas that's what it was. It was a primer because the actual the wreck because that was called Into the Breach, and the wreck the whole graphic novel was uh, 120 pages. So, okay. um, but I'm thinking about going your route. Uh, what 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 you're gonna do with the with yours, and that is you know, do like a little uh, giveaway and let people kind of get introduced to the story and the world, and then. And then go with the campaign and you know so yeah another good decision on your part so obviously you're learning from everybody's past campaigns and everybody's past projects yeah. and so uh it's and, a good thing so. yeah I'm, I'm also a backer you know so um i try to pay attention to what i'm feeling when i'm backing things too like you know and you just don't want to replicate some of the campaigns i've seen no there's a lot of a big learning <laughs> Yeah, no, I I would love to back all the independent books just because I want to support them, but man, yeah. there are just so many now, and quite frankly, some of them, the value, I don't, I hate saying this because I don't really mean it this harshly, but when sometimes the value there doesn't seem to be enough value in for what you have to buy in for. I don't know. And I yeah. don't mean and I don't mean that in a harsh way. I'm just trying I'm just speaking purely as a consumer, right? So mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's something you have to do a careful balance of, right? And uh, I think you sounds like you know that. And uh mm -hmm. so uh, I think things will be good for you. So is there um let's see, Fred talks about he hired Rob for his book cover. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people are hiring Rob. Lucky dog, he's getting a lot of getting a lot of work, uh, but he's good. He's good. He's a good artist. So, um, um, I don't see any more questions, uh, uh, Corey. But um, is there anything, um, anything you want to close up with? Um, if not, you know, just you could put some plugs in uh, where people can find you, uh, where they can learn more about the project. Uh, maybe see some more art, maybe look at the Tokyo Blue stuff. Uh, I don't know if you have that up yet or not, or at least some of the samples. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll let you take over and tell me what's up. So the the best place to find out about my comic is just my Twitter page. It'll be Okuti underscore Inu underscore comic, which um, 
I got that running. On, yeah, I got that running on your little ticker under on the stream. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's where you can find me on Twitter. Um, um, my Instagram, I believe, is the same too. And there's, you know, uh, a lot of art that I post there. Um, in my pinned tweet and in my bio, there's the uh, mailing list. Um, you can sign up for it. So, uh, what's it? Um, that chimp platform. Mailchimp. Mailchimp. Yeah. Um, you can sign up there, and I also do a show Wednesdays. I think it's um. 8 30 eastern because it's 5 30 my time mountain standard um it's on the red valkyrie channel we do uh tabletop rpg playing um it's got me Sai, jay luke and nick as our, as our uh, gm and it's quite a crazy ride as most uh rpg games end up being what, what are you what are you playing right now uh we're, so we're playing basic fantasy we just picked oh, okay. uh, something that we thought would be easy to um, Shay and uh, Volsa, or Luke, who's hopping back in from not playing in a while. And uh, it turns out that it's sort of like a mashup of 3.5, 3.0, and I think second edition. So it's actually been kind of strange for me to go back to that. But um, I play a cleric on the, on the heels for the party. Nice, nice. I, I've, I've got a weekly D&D. &D. D&D 5e is not my favorite system. But my buddy plays it. Yeah, he's the DM, and so I've been playing with their group. Or I guess it's my group too. But uh, we do a once a week thing, and it's been pretty fun. I'm only level. I'm your stereotypical level nine half orc barbarian. <laughs> so, so. Uh, you posted some art from that uh, game, I think, haven't you? On your yeah, yeah. I, I drew yeah. my character, so because that's what I like to do. I like to visualize my character, so. But yeah, so it's been fun. Uh, I've been really wanting to get into Fallout RPG, the Modifius 2D20. I don't know if you've ever played 2D20 system, but I really like it. Conan, Conan 2D20 as well. I've played a couple of those and it's really fun. So you have to check that system out. Yeah, it's a really fun system. So um, Erdale says, Arg, I arrived too late. Sorry, man. Uh, we're still. Still kind of going a little bit, but we're kind of closing up. We've been on for a little over an hour now, but I appreciate you showing up. Um, uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I could really use it, uh, really use the support there. So, um, okay, cool. And so, you're doing the RPG. Um, uh, anything else going on, or anything else you want to let people know about? Um, uh, not really. I don't, I'm not in too many places. Uh, Right now, there is, hopefully, if this works out, uh, if people know who Will Perdomo is, there might be uh, an interesting cooking show with me, him, and Lola, Lola Meats. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But I'm not sure exactly if that's 100% going to happen, but it's something we've talked about. But other than that, yeah, I'm basically just on Twitter all the time uh, if I'm not in the kitchen at work. So yeah, Twitter's the best place to find me. Right. Well, I, I want to tell you, I appreciate you coming on my little bitty channel. Have you... Have you uh... Has any of the bigger channels reached out to you? I want to do, uh, you know, uh, highlight your project, or is it just still too early? They don't do that yet. So I've gotten a couple offers, but I want to wait. Like I went on Michael Bancroft's channel before too, like a, a year and a half ago, I think. Now when I was first sort of trying to build the wave, but that was before I, I, I misjudged how long it would take uh -huh. um, to get things done. So. I kind of pulled back because I didn't want to create this big wave and then just default for it to fall flat. I, I sort of you. want to wait till it's ready to launch and sort of ride the momentum correctly. But um, uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm going to go around to like Red Valkyrie. Um, pretty sure Michael Bancroft will have me on. Um, and uh, like I want to reach out to Piper, uh, all, all the people, Pops. So I've got a lot of um, a lot of places I want to start showing up in terms of um, nice pitching the show or the book. No, that's it's, good. it's a good plan because that's half the battle is uh, getting it out there. You know, marketing, right? Getting it out there. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, um, I guess we'll close it up if nobody has questions on there. Uh, Erdell, you have a if you're still here, if you want to ask questions. So let me know real quick. Uh, if not, 
Uh, I don't want to keep you any longer. We've been on for about an hour, 20 minutes, and it's been fun. I enjoy talking to you. Of course, I get to talk to you whenever I want because when I screw a page up, you get to yell at me. So, um, but uh, um, yeah, man, it's been fun. I love hearing about it. I can't wait to get it all finished so you can get your campaign rolling and uh, we can see where it goes. Maybe, uh, maybe a series is, uh, you know, in the works for you, uh -huh. depending on what you get, right? Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, is that something you'd be uh, interested in? <laughs> it, it depends. I, I used to think back in the day that I wanted a, a series and now I'm thinking with the way everything's going in uh, Hollywood and stuff that I just prefer to stick to books at this point that I can control. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, I, I, I think people are really going to be surprised by the story we're telling. Yeah. Um, I don't think it'll be a hundred percent what people expect. So I think that's in a good way. Well, no, I think you're right. And, uh, definitely it's, it's, it's definitely very interesting. I'll tell you that. So, um, but yeah, man, uh, like I said, again, I appreciate you coming on. Um, if you know of anybody else that wants to come on and talk about making their comics and their projects, tell them to get in touch with me and, uh, see what uh -huh. we can work out. But, uh, but yeah, man, I wish you nothing but luck. Um, let's get this thing done and get it out to the masses and uh, see where it goes, huh? So, and I want to thank I want to thank everybody for for showing up, uh, asking some questions, uh, let people know we're doing it, and um, yeah, hit the like button. So, um, I don't have anything else, and I uh, hope you guys all have a good evening. Like and subscribe, guys. Yes.